over the course of the next few videos, we're going to go ahead and take a look at how to create a parallax background. And that's the background that's built up in multiple layers. And the different layers seem to scroll at different speeds. Today, we're going to look at the simplest way to do it. And that is with the scrolling texture. I've already got my camera set up. It's an orthographic. Great. I'm going to go ahead, right click, create a plane. And I need this plane to face the camera. And to be honest, I'm actually just going to child it to the camera. I'll set it zero, zero, zero. I'm going to need to rotate it either negative 90 or 270 on the Z. And I actually <laughs> adjusted the, the camera by mistake. Not what I was trying to do. I'm going to leave the camera where it is and the plane is actually going to be adjusted. Great. And I do want to push this back because we need to be able to see it. Now, since we're in orthographic, it doesn't matter how far back you go. But I do tend to like to put my layers on dedicated numbers. So I'll do, let's say, a 10 for this one. For this demonstration, I'm only going to do two layers. But I do like to go ahead and have several units in between each layers, just in case I need to come back later and add one. Now it's completely different when we start using perspective cameras, but for now we're going to stick with the orthographic and a scrolling texture. So I still need to make this a little bit bigger on the X to fill the whole screen. And I've already got a texture set up for this. This one here, I just called it background. So I'm just going to go ahead, drag and drop it on. And I'm going to switch over to a different shader. I'm going to come down to unlit and just use texture. And there we go. Uh, in order to get this to fit right, notice that we scaled on the Z, or sorry, on the X. I'm going to transfer that over down here as well. And I've written a script. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. I'm going to drag and drop it on first and take a look at the properties. We have the X speed and the Y speed. That's all that's exposed. Let's go take a look at it. So at the very top, we have my exposed variables. Uh, this is just how fast I want this particular texture to scroll. With the way I have it set up, I want it to either be between zero and one. And now that I think of it, I wrote this pretty quickly this morning. I really just wanted it to be a demonstration, not a, a complete project as, as far as, you know, you just take this, drag it in your project and it's gonna work. But one thing I should add here is actually the range tag. I know for this project, I don't want them to be able to enter any number greater than one or less than zero on either of the, the fields here. So by using that range, if I come back into my project, go ahead, select that plane again. Uh, we have these sliders now. Now for the background, the very furthest one, you generally want that to move the fastest. So I'm going to leave it at one, which is 100%. And I'm going to call it background. All right, so we have these fields exposed. And if you really want, you can just go ahead and put them all in one line. All right, so next we have a vector two off, or vector two that we're just gonna call offset, and this is just how much to move it. And since what we're going to be doing in order to achieve this effect is going ahead and scrolling the offset on our textures, I wanna make sure that I have a reference to it so I don't have to keep looking it up. So I'm storing that in this private variable here, which of course on awake, we go out and get. So here's where the magic happens. I've got this public function here. It takes a vector two, which I'm calling position. Now what I'm doing with the offset is I'm going ahead and saying, add to it the X position in here, multiplied by the X speed, the speed I want it to scroll at. So remember it's between zero and one, one being 100% of the value that's being passed in for X. And I'm doing the exact same thing for Y. Take that value that's being passed in for Y and then multiply it by the percentage that I want it to scroll. So you can have your X and Y scroll at different speeds if you wish. Then I'm gonna go ahead and check to see if the X is greater than one. And same thing for the Y if it's greater than one. If it is, subtract one from it. And to be honest, there should be another one in here, an else if. And we're gonna say if offset dot X is less than one, less than negative one, then add one to it. And the reason why we're doing this is we don't want these numbers to get really huge. We want to keep them small, small as possible. And with the way of the offset, the way it works, 
is that it can only be between zero and one anyway. So anything above one or less than zero or less than negative one, it's just an extra number. Actually, any whole number would just be an extra number there and we don't need it. So let's get rid of it. And of course we need the exact same thing for Y. There we go. I told you I wrote this code quickly before the uh, video, right? <laughs> I thought it'd be a little faster if I wrote all the code ahead of time and then we could just go ahead and read through it. So after we get the offset all set up, I'm gonna go ahead and reassign it back to that texture, the main texture offset. Now you might be wondering, you know, when does this get called and how does it get put in there? And I've done that through the main camera. Now the way I generally have my scene set up is that my camera follows my player. I might have some sort of uh, clamping on the camera or some sort of smooth dampening following it around. And then what I wanna do is go ahead and have my scrollable textures to, to basically move and lurp around with that camera itself. So the way I like to set it up is player followed by camera, camera adjusts the background. So it's a bit of a chain. So I've gone ahead and set up the script here. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Notice that we have a list exposed. Actually, I made it an array. I could have made it a list though. Remember I wrote this quickly, right? <laughs> Let's go and we'll take a look at this. So in the scroll cam script, I've gone ahead and created this array of scrollable backgrounds, or well, I just call them scrollables. Again, I probably should have went ahead and used a list here, but it doesn't matter, I've used an array. I also have a vector two here of the last frame position, which I go ahead and take our current X and current Y position and store there in our start method. Now there are methods to automatically convert vector threes to vector twos and vice versa, but those are actually slower than actually just instantiating it like this. So I've gone ahead and done this. I just always end up doing it this way. So let's go down, we'll take a look at our update. The first thing I want to do is, well, basically the exact same thing is go ahead and take our current position in our transform for X and Y and assign it to this new current pos vector two, and then check the last frame according to the new frame. If they're the exact same, then we haven't moved. In which case, return, get out of here. There's nothing we have to do here. But if we have moved, then we're gonna come down and create a new position. And then we're gonna go ahead and take the X. Let me break this up into two, two separate errors. We're gonna go ahead and take the X position and we'll take the last frame's position and subtract the current frame's position for the X and also for the Y. And then we go ahead, actually, we can shorten this up a bit. Remember I said I wrote this really quickly, right? <laughs> so pos is equal to last frame position minus current pos. And what that does is these two lines at the same time. So it's gonna subtract the X and the Y force. But after we're done that, I wanna go ahead and get rid of that whole number in front of the decimal. And this is how we do it. I'm just gonna go ahead and take that pos X and subtract the integer, which actually truncates off the, the decimal part. This isn't necessarily the best way to do it. Like I said, I was just trying to get this done real quick this morning so I could get a video out before I had to leave. And well, this worked. There's probably a better way to do this though. But anyway, this is gonna remove that whole number from it. The only thing I'm left with is that decimal, which is gonna be between zero and one, but not including one. And likewise with a negative, it'll be between zero and negative one, but not including negative one. And I do that for the X and the Y. And I'm actually gonna get rid of the lines that I've commented out. And for those on Patreon, I will go ahead and upload this project for you, or at least the code. All right, so now that that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and iterate through all of those scrollable backgrounds I've got scrolled in, I've got stored in scrollables. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pass that position into it. And then at the end, I'm gonna go take that last frame position and make it equal to the new frame position, which again, I don't have to set up there. I can just say current position, <laughs> but it was quick. All right, so let's go back in. And when I hit play, uh, let me go ahead and grab that camera. So as the camera's following my character around, we get nothing because I haven't assigned any scrollable backgrounds to it. So I'm gonna go ahead, we'll say one. I'll drag the background into it. 
And now when I scroll the camera around, make sure I got the camera selected, we get scrolling on the X and the Y. And because that texture is parented to the camera, it's always going to be centered for you. Great. Let's go ahead and add another one for the foreground. And like I said, you can make as many layers as you want. For this example, I just wanted to do two, just to give you the idea of how this works. Because it's going to be a little bit different in every game, depending on how you're implementing it. Let's call this one foreground. Uh, let me see. What zero, zero, zero. Oh, we got to do negative 90 to get it facing the camera. I got to move it back. For the foreground, I'm going to put it at negative one. Oh, sorry, one. Now this is too big. On X, I need two just to fill it up. I'm sure I could figure it out exactly, but two is fine. And on Z, I want to shrink it down a bit. So 0.5, uh, I like to use whole numbers. Let's do 0.25. And we'll just move it down to the bottom a bit more. And I've got a texture set up for that as well. The foreground, I'll drag and drop that on. And I'm going to go ahead and switch that shader over. There we go. Now, of course, we have to fix the offset because it doesn't look good. And for the, uh, sorry, for the tiling. And this is 0.25. I just copy it over. I guess technically we could actually do this in the script as well when it starts out, but that's fine. I'll set it up here. And the only thing left is to add that script. And if we go ahead and take a look at the first one, uh, the values are one and one. Let's shrink these down a bit. Let's say I don't want this to scroll at all on Y. I'm going to put this at zero. And let's do about 10% on this one. Well, 10% might be too slow. Oh, we'll do 10%. Let's see what it looks like. So now all I have to do is start it up. Make sure you have the camera selected. And as you move around, uh, this one is going to work. You know why? because we didn't add it to the scrollable list. <laughs> so the second one, there we go. Now we, now we got them both in there. Let's try it out. So now as we got the camera, notice how the background scrolls faster than the foreground. Of course, you'll probably want better textures, but this is what I had. And of course, it doesn't scroll on Y. Now you may even not want this to be parented. So as they, whoops, moved the wrong one. So as they have the camera and they're running around, maybe you've got all these different platforms, you're making a platformer game. So as they're running around, you know, you can't see that platform, but as they start dropping back down, you can see that platform again. Of course, you want to do something with the scrolling if you want it to scroll. Generally, when you have something parented, like a bunch like this, you usually have some sort of Flappy Bird type game where it's like you infinitely go in one direction or potentially two, and you just want to make sure everything's scrolling with it. But anyway, that's how you go ahead and create a scrolling texture. I consider it probably the simplest way to do it, but come back tomorrow and we'll see another way of doing it. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You'd be a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest or being stalked by eagles and falcons, lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs>